episode of the Young Grown Ups Video Transmission. I'm your host, Mark, and today we're going to be taking a look at Funko's Game of Thrones Wave 1, um, figures 3, 4, and 5, uh, the Hound, Daenerys Targaryen, and the White Walker. I realize that they're out of order. There. Now, 3, 4, and 5. Um, so this is only half of Wave 1. The other figures consist of Ned Stark, Jon Snow, and Tyrion Lannister. Um, three of my favorite characters from the show, so why don't I have them? Um, I can't really say that either one of those three or any of those three have a really strong head sculpt. Um, I've seen them all. I've had my hands on all three of, the, of those additional figures. But I really, really think that these are the three strongest figures in the wave. Now, we all know who the most popular characters on the show are. Daenerys is a super, super popular character. We already know that we're getting a second Daenerys figure in Wave 2. I still think this one is my, my favorite of the, of the two. The other one, she's gonna, like in blue robes. She's a little more regal. She'll probably come with an additional dragon. Uh, and we're probably going to get down the road another Tyrion Lannister because he is such a popular character. Uh, I'm really not feeling the Tyrion that's out right now in the armor. I think I'm going to hold out for an additional Tyrion to be made later. I'm almost positive it'll happen. Um, but I think with these three figures here, the Hound, the White Walker, and Daenerys, I honestly think that these are the three strongest painted, sculpted, articulated, and um, head sculpt likeness, I think these are the three best of the series. Uh, and that's why I've decided to get these three and review them. I honestly said that I was going to stay away from this wave of figures. One, it's produced by Funko, who's really only known for making bobbleheads. And two, because because of that, I, I and this being their first foray into the six-inch scale action figure world, I honestly don't think these figures were that great. I thought they were pretty much garbage. I'd seen them, just didn't really didn't want to get into them. I also didn't want to get into the Dark Horse figures that are around seven inches, but they're not really figures. They don't move, they're not articulated, they're better sculpted, and they have better paint, and they're only $5 more. They run about $25, whereas these only run $19.99, so $20. Bucks. Um, but I'm not into statues. If it's just static, I really don't want it. So I like to play with these toys. I like to move them around and pose them, and so when you take that away, that's kind of half the fun of the figure. Um, but we were on a vacation in Atlanta, and I picked up Daenerys. I found her at a, at a, at a toy store at Toys R Us, and I w had some money, and I was like, yeah, it was kind of like an off-the-cuff, on-the-whim kind of purchase, and I bought her, and I, and I played with her in the hotel room, got to check her out. She was really good. Like, I was actually really blown away at how well she was sculpted and articulated and how fun she was to play with. Um, and I was like, well, if I can't just have one figure, they're like Pringles. You can't have just one. I got to get another one. So I really wanted the White Walker. So I looked all over Atlanta. couldn't find a White Walker. Ended up get, ordering him off of uh, Amazon. Amazon has all of these figures, and they're all $19.99. So don't waste your time going all over town to find these figures. Just get them right off Amazon. And then uh, I watched a bunch of reviews for these figures, and everybody kept talking about how awesome the Hound was and, you know, his face sculpt is okay it's not the best but it's okay it's passable but uh because of everything it comes with the helmet and the sword and i really liked the character on the show um i decided well i'll, I'll go ahead and last night we uh we went to the bookstore take our take our young boys to the bookstore and of course uh barnes and noble has a huge selection of these these figures so i picked one up so um you know, who knows? This is a slippery slope for me. I already know which figures I'm going to get from Wave 2, but I, I may end up getting all the ones from Wave 1 as well because that's how I am. So we're going to start off here. I really like the the style of box. I mean, they totally stole this idea from Star Wars and their uh, six-inch uh, Black Series um, collection. They're calling this the Leg Legacy Collection, um, but it's really nice. Um, the packaging is super, super nice. Um, I'll flip all of these around so you can see the artwork on the back. These are all steals taken directly from the show. Uh, and you can see that um, Wave 1 uh, consists of Jon Snow, Tyrion, Lannister, the Hound, White Walker, Daenerys, and Ned Stark. Um, nice artwork from the stills from the show, as we said. And uh, it says that these were... Um, this is powered by Gentle Giant Studios. So they probably relied on Gentle Giant Studios to actually um, do um, face scans and, and do the 3D scanning of the figures and then 
they provided that information to Funko, who then produced these figures. I'm pretty sure that's how um, that partnership worked out. So um, without further ado, because we're five minutes in and I've just been rambling about toys in a box, let's get these things opened up and uh, take a closer look at each one individually, starting with the Hound. Okay, so here we have the Hound opened up out of the package. And I got to tell you, it was about a 15 minute uh, interval between getting him opened up and actually um, hit and record because his right elbow, the uh, the joint, um, had been painted over and uh, it just was not going to budge. So I had to take it over to the desk, had to separate the joint um, with an X-Acto knife, which is, that's my pretty much standard practice for any time I get a joint that's uh, too stiff. And it, nine times out of 10, that joint's too stiff because some paint has dried in the actual joint. And just, you know, slicing that paint separately, you know, separating it from the joint itself is typically all it needs. And that's exactly what this needed here. Sorry, I had to wet the old whistle. So, this figure is pretty, pretty fantastic. I gotta tell you, he comes with two gigantic bastard swords. I mean, these things are not playing around. You can see one's on his back, one goes on his holster, goes on his belt, and you can see they're almost, ex I mean, they are identical um, in length. Only the, the sword that um, fits into the sheath on his back has a, um, a longer uh, handle and a longer pommel. But, um, but each one of these swords is just fantastic. We'll take a closer look at these in here in a minute. I just noticed you can see his hairline. Um, let me see if I can raise the camera a little bit and zoom in. If you can see this, I hope, I'm, I'm sure you can. Um, Man, every time I zoom in, it actually wants to zoom in on my desk in the background. Um, but you can see that um, it actually has his hairline uh, coming out um, in the back. But I got to tell you, uh, even though he doesn't wear it much in the show, um, he, we only saw him wear it in uh, season one. Um, this helmet is amazing. It may have been season two. You Game of Thrones uber uber fans don't. Don't, uh, don't ride me too much about that. I'm a huge fan of the show. We've never missed an episode. We watch it every Sunday night when it comes on. Uh, I don't buy the episodes on DVD or Blu-ray because we have HBO. We have HBO Go. I can watch them whenever I want, so I don't feel the need of buying them. Um, but uh, but I, I, I am reading the first book now, so um, I, I'm really, really enjoying it. So I love this helmet. This freaking helmet is amazing. Look at that sculpt. It's so incredibly badass. And the lower part um, of the uh, helmet is actually a soft rubber. You can see how easy it is for me to lift this up. But it looks hard because of the, the metal wash that's on it. It looks great. But the top half is actually a much... Um, it's still kind of pliable, but it's a much harder plastic, and it's actually on a hinge, so you're actually able to raise it up quite a bit. So um, his head you can raise up, and so you can actually see him in there quite well. And I really love that it actually closes down on top of itself, uh, and that's just pretty fantastic. You just have to be careful when pulling it off, but you do just kind of, it is just soft rubber, and then it just comes right off. So while we got the uh, camera zoomed in here, We'll take a look at this head sculpt. Now we know that since it was powered by Gentle Giant, this is not just a freely sculpted figure. This is actually gonna be um, a representation of the actual actor's face. This has been scaled down and then hand painted. Now I will tell you that I don't think that this is a horrible face sculpt. Um, it looks close enough to the actor. You can see kind of the bottom lip poking out. Um, I will say there's not a lot of scarring. Um, uh, there's not a lot of burned tissue on his face if I can I don't know if I can get this much closer with the camera zooming in or not but um there's not a lot of scarring there's some paint um that's probably not showing up because it's too bright there's some pink paint um sort of painted um above his right eye and on his right cheek uh right in this area but not enough I mean this face is not nearly as scarred and disfigured as he is in the in the show um but um but he does look pretty nice. I will say this is not a bad head sculpt, but I'll say that it's pretty sloppy paintwork. I'm not the biggest fan. The eyes and the eyebrows are pretty clean, but everything else. I mean, that, that beard looks like he fell into a chocolate pie. Um, I mean, and that's being polite. So that's just not the, the nicest um, paint job ever. Um, moving down a little bit, I do want to say that the paint and the sculpting on the rest of this figure is top, top notch. 
Um, you can see the different styles of chain mail that we've got going on, both here on the arm. Each one of those pieces of chain mail are individually sculpted uh, right in this area. None of that is sloppy. Uh, it looks fantastic, both how it wrinkles. It literally looks like heavy metal chain uh, in there. I'm lifting the arm up. You can see a different type of chain mail that's on the inside, um, the straps, and then the outer mail um, that's on uh, the rivets on this heavy leather tunic he's wearing. Super clean paint job in this belt, uh, and all the little tiny holes in, in the buckle looks really nice. You can see all the rivets uh, along his collar, and some really nice. I love that this is all kind of weathered and beaten. You can see there's dents. Uh, it, this really looks like hammered. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Yep, that is a broken figure. Yep, broken figure. Figure's broken. Right there on camera. Yep, that is a broken shoulder joint. It's supposed to be a ball joint. And that thing is as broken as it comes. Broken as it comes. That's unbelievable. That's absolutely unbelievable. That just broke right on camera. And I wasn't even moving it around. What the hey? Well, that's disappointing. That's very disappointing. All right. Uh, okay, let me just push on. So right here on the belt, you can see that this is where his additional sword will slide in. Um, and it slides in very tightly, just like that right there. And um, you can see that there's some nice um, wood grain on the, on the, on the actual um, sheath. And then you pull the sword out and you've got some very nice paintwork on the sword itself looks really really nice so very nice detail on the sword coming around here uh, I was going to show off the uh, the arms but I guess I won't be able to show off the the, the left arm um, some very nice paintwork the hammered shoulder pads look nice um, varying degrees of shine and sheen with the paint that they used and the wash on the armor just looks pretty fantastic and uh, those hands you can see individual plated finger gloves um, which look really nice nice heavy plate on the back uh, and then moving down you can lift up this tunic it's not much to look at um, it looks kind of ugly underneath there you can see double jointed knees no problem um, you can see that um, jointed feet um, we got a very nice rocker on the feet uh, as well and some nice range of motion up and down god i gotta tell you i'm really i'm really thrown off by that arm breaking um this was the one that i picked up at a local store so um I, they only had one hound but i definitely will be returning this to the store and I'll, i guess i'll just pick this guy up off of uh, amazon but yeah i will be i will be returning him to the store no doubt um, so yeah, there's the hound. He looks pretty impressive with the, with the, you know, besides the, uh, maybe, maybe this is an action feature. Maybe in the, in the, in the movie, in the show and in the book, he loses an arm and they've already like pre-built that into the figure. Uh, that being said, he's really nice. Uh, he looks fantastic and definitely would be, um, a standout figure in this line were it not for the fact that, um, he broke. So let's move on to figure number four in the series, which is the white Walker one that I'm very excited about opening up. So let's get him opened up and take a closer look at the white Walker. Okay, I'm a little shook up after the uh, the shoulder incident, and uh, and and just to be clear, when I told you guys I had to go over and use my X-Acto knife to fix that figure, I was working on his left elbow, uh, and I the the left shoulder was working fine at that point because I had to move it around. It broke at the shoulder. I was working on the elbow, so something must have gotten twisted or turned wrong um, after I put his elbow back on. Um, 
and you know just forcing it probably snapped the shoulder so it was probably broke before I started doing the review and then I barely moved it in the review you guys saw how it just came, kind of came off but I was working on a different part but I'm still sure it was my fault because the elbow was the shoulder was working fine so um, I still have the receipt I went and checked uh, our trash to make sure I hadn't thrown it away and I had thrown it away but it was still there and not, you know thankfully not covered with you know garbage or whatever and um, so I will be returning that figure. And don't worry, I will tell them that it is broken and that it is a defective product and not to put it back on the shelf. So, um, but I know they didn't have another Hound figure. I'm probably going to swap it out. They had Daenerys, Tywin, uh, or uh, Tyrion, and uh, a White Walker. So I'll probably swap it out and get a Tyrion. So I guess I will be getting Tyrion now. Uh, and I'll just order another Hound off Amazon. So, I will go ahead and venture to say, with only uh, having played with only three of these figures, um, that this White Walker is the standout figure in this line. The sculpting, the paint, everything about this figure screams perfection and does not look like it came from a company that has never made six-inch scale action figures before. Um, this figure looks pretty fantastic. Let's see if I can zoom in here. Wow. Um, and, uh, and and kind of bring him in close because I want to I want to show off this um, this this really nice head sculpt. Uh, my camera just can't zoom that far in. Hmm. So you can see here, very nice sculpting on this head sculpt. Nice, gaunt, sunken in cheekbones and jowl line in there. It just looks so killer. You can see the craggy, kind of frosty, kind of beard he's got going on. Um, it doesn't really show up well in this lighting, but his eyes are a very bright, piercing blue. And in hand on the figure, the paint job is unreal um uh his hair could be a little bit better you can see that it's sculpted to fall across his back the only problem is that it doesn't lay flat um if it laid flat like that um it would be really cool maybe i can heat that up and hold it down and then let it cool and then maybe it would um lay flat but you can see nice sculpting on the hair at least um i love the um moving down the figure i really love the uh the leather work um, that's done on both the gauntlets and um, his loincloth here. It's very soft, pliable um, rubber. You can see that the beads and everything, the intricately um, painted uh, bead beadwork here. There's not a lot of it, but it's very clean. The paint is very clean. It's not sloppy. Nice detail on. Um, I mean, it really looks like worn, weathered um, gauntlets, um, leather weathered leather <laughs> that's what it looks like the the hands have a very nice um 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 flex to them they have a they have a joint that allows them to flex upwards and downwards um this hand in particular the um the ring finger yeah the ring finger and the thumb are connected so you have to kind of feed the uh, the staff through them nice leather work on the strands this looks really cool the rubbery plastic and what i really like is the tip of this um the brown part is painted on this clear plastic to make to make it look like ice now you know we haven't seen the white walkers do much in the um in the in the show um, i think season one ended on one of these guys uh, on a close-up and then here in the in the current season we've seen sort of like the, the one of the higher-ups we don't know if it's the king or or whatnot um, sort of turn one of the uh, babies into a White Walker um, so we've seen some of that we haven't seen too much of them um, but they are a pretty badass group of folks um, from the books I can tell you there's a huge scene uh, in the books uh, in in from the beginning of Game of Thrones that didn't make it into the TV show where it's more of a showdown with the, with a bunch of uh, White Walkers and not just a couple. And, um, and it was really cool. So, um, got a nice double jointed knee, um, and nice, um, articulation on the ankles and feet. 
Uh, very, very nice figure. I, I just, I'm telling you, this is without a doubt the uh, the standout figure uh, in this first wave of figures. I think the standout figure from wave two is probably going to be um, Jamie Lannister. He looks fantastic. He looks well sculpted and well painted, but all we've seen so far are prototypes. Um, we haven't seen the actual figures in hand, so until we do, um, you know, I'm going to withhold judgment, but nice. Um, uh, he doesn't have any waist articulation, but he does have this upper torso articulation, which is very nice and stiff. There's a nice, nice joint there. Um, so this figure is pretty nice, and he's a pretty decent height. I've already boxed up um, Hound, or I would do a, a size comparison, and it won't be fair to do it with Daenerys because she's really short to begin with. But man, I gotta tell you, I am very happy to own this figure. He is, he is quite cool. And even though we haven't seen in the TV show the extent of their power, uh, he is a great addition to my Game of Thrones uh, collection. So uh, let's move on to uh, the last figure that we're going to look at today, and that's Daenerys Targaryen, the Queen of Dragons. Okay, now we're moving on to the last figure that we're going to look at today, but also the first figure in this set that I actually purchased. Um, like I said, I bought her at a local Toys R Us when we were up in Atlanta last weekend, and, um, and I instantly fell in love with her. She is next to Tyrion. She is my favorite character on the show. I love her, and I love Tyrion Lannister both. I wish they would get married on the show, in the books, get married, make dragon, like midget dragon babies. I'm sorry, little people dragon babies. And rule uh, all seven kingdoms, because I think they're the two coolest characters on the show. And um, I will not be buying the other um, uh, uh, Daenerys figure in Wave 2, she's all regal and got the blue robes on, and that's how she looks now. And she looks fantastic, but I love her in her Khaleesi outfit. I love her when she was with, um, 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 called Drago, um, Drogo, and I, I just absolutely love them. I, I love the way her, her shirt looks, the, the leather work on it, the, uh, the dress. I think she looks more at home here. Uh, I don't think she looks as... Uh, as comfortable when she's wearing the uh, the regal the regal dresses. So just just so we're clear, I'm putting all of my money on on um, Daenerys uh, and her dragons to 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 win the throne. We'll see how that goes. Um, you'll notice that she does have a baby dragon uh, on her uh, shoulder, and this is actually really cool. Let me see if I can um, see how far I can zoom in before my camera starts acting squirrely. But um, I did want to show, and I missed this the first time I started fooling around with the figure uh, in the hotel room. I didn't really notice this until I got home. Um, but um, what she has is right here on her shoulder. She actually has, I'm going to take the dragon off. She has two little pegs, two little holes, um, kind of like a square hole and then more of a rounded hole right here. And that is for the uh, foot pegs for the dragon. Um, let's see if I can get this to focus. Okay, you actually, um, you can see here down on its feet that it has both a square um, peg and a round peg, and that is to help him sit on her shoulder. Um, you can see nice paintwork on the dragon wings. It's very textured, sculpted on the, on the bottom here, but kind of um, soft and kind of smooth sculpted uh, on the top. So very nice, subtle texture work uh, on the little baby dragon itself. It does have a long tail that I'm sort of holding it by. Um, and uh, sorry, my camera keeps focusing on the extreme far background. But you can see, very nice sculpt uh, on this little guy for it to be so small. And uh, not a bad paint job either. So um, taking a look at Daenerys, you can see she has a very nice head sculpt. And uh, I did sort of go through all the figures that they had and make sure I got one with lots of clean paint lines. She just looks fantastic. If you'll bear with me one more second, I'm going to pause and change the lighting setting on my uh, my camera. Okay, I wanted to darken it a little bit so she wasn't so blown out because um, she, she is so fair skin and the natural light coming in the window is kind of blowing her out. Very nice sculpt on the hair. You can see it's a very soft um, rubber um, that kind of, you can, you know, move the big strands of hair. I love that the back is not one big strand, but it is sort of separated um, braids nice braid work. I mean, I mean, just check that out. It's very intricately detailed. 
and looks incredible. Um, she has a very nice range of motion. Um, her the joints that with these figures, and 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 we've already seen with um, the Hound. They're not the most durable because what they use is they use a, a clear ball joint. Um, I could tell with both the legs on um, the Hound, and I don't know if you can see that, but those are clear. They're not, a, I don't know if that makes them more or less durable, or maybe it was cheaper. I'm not sure, but you can see that the, the joints are clear. And so these joints on her arms right here on the elbow are actually clear, and then they're painted with this flesh tone, and it's real sloppy. It's not the... It's not the cleanest paint job of all. It doesn't hold the color very well. You can see it actually um, is peeled off of the, the, the paint is actually peeled off the joint very well. Um, but, you know, I don't, I don't know what their reasoning is for that, but this arm looks pretty, pretty clean. The other one, not so much. Um, I like the, um, the sculpting on her leather gloves, the sculpting on her, on her legs and the boots and the leather skirt. It all looks really nice. The skirt is split on the side to give a better range of motion. You can see where she's got a um, upper thigh swivel, double jointed knee, uh, cut joint right above the, nope, no cut joint at the boot. I thought it did, uh, articulated at the ankles, just like everybody else. She does have an upper, um, like a torso joint underneath, hidden underneath, and, um, and no waist articulation, but you can spin her with her upper torso and she looks great. If you lean back, you see a little bit of belly button po poking out. So very nice, very well sculpted figure um, and very impressive. Um, were it not for you know her being so impressive as a figure, I definitely would have not picked up um, any of the other ones, no doubt. So uh, these figures are actually quite nice. If you can find some with some good paint apps, I think that's gonna be the key to every one of these figures, I, again, I don't think they have vi I don't think they have bad badly sculpted heads. Uh, I think the the heads are, are are pretty nice. I think it's the sloppy paintwork that um that actually uh, sort of hinders the the strength of the uh, of the head sculpt. And you know, I I'm not even really going to chalk it up to Funko being a company that's never made action figures before. Um, I you know. You take a look at the same size figure in the same size six inch scale class. Uh, you look at Hasbro's um, Star Wars, the Black Series figures, and um, both Bespin Luke and Obi Wan Kenobi, they don't have the best head sculpts. I mean, the best figures in that wave are Boba Fett and Greedo uh, and the Stormtroopers, R2 D2, and that's because they're not head sculpts. Those are all sort of, you know, alien helmeted robots, you know, they all sort of share um, mechanical qualities, except for Greedo, but uh, he's not a human, so it's easier to get that stuff um, perfect, um, but yeah, you look at, you look at the, um, the first Luke, the X-Wing Luke, looked fantastic, but Bespin Luke and um, uh, Revenge of the Sith, Obi-Wan, uh, the head sculpts are horrible. I, and, and again, 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 I'm sorry. The head sculpts are not horrible. The head sculpts are all right. It's the paint apps that look horrible, and then they make the heads look look terrible. Um, so it's it Hasbro that same company it, you know, has that same problem. Their company's been around forever, and they're they're working on an enormous license of Star Wars. Now, Game of Thrones is rising. It's up there, um, but I think Funko is really going to come into their own uh, in the next several waves of figures. And I think they're going to do a great job. I'm very much looking forward to uh, Series 2, which is going to be Jamie Lannister, Arya Stark, um, Brienne, uh, Daenerys in her blue robes. Um, I, I know I'm forgetting somebody. Oh, uh, Rob Stark. Um, there may be somebody else in there that I'm forgetting. Um, but those are the ones that I know off the top of my head. So, Oh, and Drogo. I, uh, Carl Drogo. Is going to be the the sixth figure in the wave, so um, I'm really looking forward to those figures. I'm definitely going to be getting um, Jamie Lannister, definitely going to be getting Rob Stark, and definitely going to be getting Arya Stark. I don't know about the rest. Brienne, I may I may skip the second Daenerys. I'm not going to get Daenerys, uh, and I don't know about Drogo. I don't know. He's already dead. I don't know. I know a lot of those other characters are dead too, but 
I don't know. I, I think I'll, uh, I think I'll, I'll, I'll pass on that. I don't want to spoil anything. I don't want to spoil anything. So I'll, I'll leave it there. So um, I, I really do recommend these figures. You know, take a chance on them. They're not bad, but definitely check out ones. Make sure you're getting one with a good paint job on the head sculpt, because um, you'll be all the more happier for it. So as always, we're gonna ask if you dug the video review, please like, comment, or subscribe. Be sure to check out all of our brand new toy reviews right here on YouTube.com/slash/ungrownup. So until next time, peace.